Thank you for your interest in the California Master Beekeeper Program. My name is Wendy Mather, and along with my colleague, Leah Taylor, we co-manage the program. It's an honor to share the story of our program's modest beginnings, and I'd like to use a beekeeping metaphor to describe it. We started out as a single package of bees in a hive in the apiary at the Bee Biology Lab at UC Davis in 2016. And over the past five beekeeping seasons, we have outgrown our yard at Bee Bio and expanded our program to three other satellite locations in the state of California. And similar to beekeeping, we've made our splits from our strong hive here in Davis, and the state of California is benefiting from the education and outreach our stewards and ambassadors for honeybees and beekeeping are providing. So the goal of this presentation is to give you a, an inside look at the building of a camp, the building of the California Master Beekeeper Program. Dr. Alina Nino came to Davis in 2014 from Pennsylvania, and she took the job as the assistant specialist in cooperative extension for apiculture at the University of California at Davis. Uh, she and the lab staff had seen how science-based beekeeping programs had positively influenced the health of honeybees in other states and felt compelled to get novice beekeepers across the state of California trained in science-based beekeeping. You know, especially since the largest gathering of honeybees and beekeepers in the nation happens in the almond orchards of California each February. That's how it started, by establishing that need. And the need was pretty apparent. I mean, honeybees are the primary pollinator for over 30 crops in the state of California. There are approximately 500,000 resident hives in California, and 2 million hives are needed here during almond pollination. So that's approximately two thirds of the nation's commercial supply, right? So commercial beekeeping adds between 15 and 20 billion in economic value to Cal Ag each year. Currently in California, there are 1.17 million acres of almonds. And the 2019-2020 crop weighed in at 2.5 billion pounds. So the honeybee is one of our most valuable resources here for our economy as, as well as our food security. And now here in California, we get to enjoy and export all of the fresh fruits, nuts, and veggies that rely on honeybee pollination like cherries, cantaloupes, citrus fruit, berries. Honeybees also pollinate apricots, cucumbers, kiwi fruit, pears, and pluots, and are responsible for the pollination of crops grown here in California for seed, like uh, broccoli, carrots, lettuce, onions, and sunflowers. So actually beef, milk, and ice cream are closely linked to the honeybee as well. So there's a definite need to ensure the health of our honeybees. As you can see here, beekeepers have had a tough time over the past little while. The Bee Informed Partnership has been reporting on colony losses for the past 10 years and they've been as high as up to 45 percent annually primarily as a result of pathogens, pests, pesticides, and the lack of pasture or good nutrition. And those colony losses have also prompted those who have never kept bees before to try their hand at beekeeping in an effort to help honeybee conservation. Right? This is a noble gesture to assist our ag economy and develop a closer connection to how our food is grown, for sure. But if those novice beekeepers decide 
to just have bees instead of actually keep bees, the risk to the honeybee population compounded by that neglect on top of those four Ps that I just mentioned is a recipe for disaster. You know, neglect in the state of California is also a serious public safety issue due to the increasing numbers of locally defensive bees, AKA those bees with Africanized temperament. So what's an assistant specialist in cooperative extension for apiculture to do, right? You need to develop a science-based statewide beekeeping curriculum. Now, uh, even though there are several quite venerable beekeeper associations across the state already, these associations serve as hubs of information transfer. The information provided within these clubs isn't always accurate or always supported by research findings. And considering the importance of California to U.S. agriculture and the fact that almost 80% of the colonies in the nation start their pollination and honey production routes in the almonds, it's our responsibility here in California to support beekeepers with science-based information and proper honeybee husbandry skills to protect the health of all honeybees during our pollination extravaganza. You know, across the U.S., there are approximately 212,000 beekeepers operating just under 2.7 million hives it's from U USDA. Uh, USDA describes 200,000 of them as hobbyists, another 10,000 of them as sideliners or part-timers, and about 2,000 commercial producers are those beekeepers who own 300 colonies or more. And they're also the ones that produce about 60% of the honey extracted annually in the U.S. as well. So there's certainly a need for a science-based apiculture curriculum providing proactive IPM and knowing some beekeeping bases can help in mitigating for pests and diseases, which in turn saves beekeepers as well as growers time and money. So development of a statewide California Master Beekeeper curriculum basically helps to minimize any disastrous consequences such as increased pest and pathogen transfer or spread of Africanized bees, which are considered a public health risk due to lack of understanding of proper honeybee husbandry. So basically the needs that were identified were supporting honeybee health and reducing colony loss public safety, uh, especially protecting the public from overly defensive bees, and supporting and protecting the agriculture economy and the food security here in the state of California. So with those needs identified, a California-centric Master Beekeeper Program curriculum was created and it positions members, campers, through the train the trainer model to increase extension outreach, which is a beautiful thing as Alina is the sole extension specialist for apiculture in California would be really challenging to have frequent communication with all of the stakeholders, which in addition to beekeepers also includes growers, PCA, school groups, general public, and manage a lab and stay up to date and informed on the latest research findings in a field that is vibrantly and constantly evolving. So through some 
curriculum coupled with some free pest and disease webinars offered in person at Davis as perks for members at the program, as well as online and some uh, offerings at some other satellite camp hubs, campers really do assist in extensions reach, which is truly a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's, let's talk shop. Let's talk about the program here. Camp trains ambassadors for honeybees and beekeeping. And the level of knowledge and skill that members acquire is commensurate to the level that they're at in the program. And let's look at the next slide to learn what the program levels are. From start to finish, if your sites are set on a master level certification, you can move through the program in four years. Some folks take longer. Some folks never move through the program. Some folks stop at the apprentice level. Whatever you have your sites set on, that's what you can reach. And the camp offers a variety of ways to learn as well. You can show up in person, online with live webinars, uh, live online study halls, uh, or a hybrid, right? Uh, you can do independent learning, group learning, whatever works for your learning style. Our apprentice assistant is new to us in 2021, and it's pretty inclusive. Uh, it, if uh, Folks feel that they have any constraints around beekeeping. Uh, for example, they don't have uh, an apiary that they have access to. Uh, they live in an apartment or they have financial constraints. Um, this is a great way to just come and see what beekeeping is all about and they'll learn how to recognize potential problems by doing hive assessments, anticipate and prevent negative events like robbing, be able to assess mite loads. And they'll just learn to start and keep a colony healthy. The, the thing with the apprentice assistant is they must work in conjunction with, at all times, an apprentice, a certified apprentice. So um, it is uh, our way of developing an ongoing mentorship program. And who knows, these assistants may be inspired to move on all the way through the program. Now our apprentice level is our certified level and our members are required to own or manage a hive, at least one hive for a year prior to testing. And where possible, they need to register with their county that they keep bees. And basically uh, this level is about planning ahead for your first hive and working your colonies. These are the basics of the apprentice curriculum. And these are also included in the study guide. And as I mentioned earlier, some folks prefer uh, an in-person education experience. Some are more uh, into self-directed learning. But again, we offer study halls, which address any questions. So at this level, members learn how to safely light and appropriately operate a smoker, identify different casts in the colony, they open and examine a colony, properly manage a colony throughout a year. They can identify, take care of any of the colony issues. Uh, they can build standard hive equipment they can feed their colonies, they know when to do that, they can prevent robbing, and they can monitor for pests and pathogens, and they also learn how to requeen a colony. 
when our apprentices successfully complete their apprentice level certification, they're invited to fill out an application and move on to the journey level if they're interested, where anatomy, queen rearing, honey and hive products, as well as uh, an overview of native bees takes place. So by the end of the journey level, uh, they are well on their way to becoming a master beekeeper. They identify internal and external anatomy of all of the castes, understand function of various structures of all the castes, their knowledge of honeybee queen biology and queen rearing methods is pretty intense. They understand the major hive pest biology and know how to use all of the pest management strategies. They understand and apply various treatments for all of the hive pests, and they know how and when to implement non-chemical methods of pest control as well. And also the identification of plants that are pollinator supportive uh, the ability to uh, be familiar with sample preparation for pollen analysis and the understanding of the role of and I the ability to identify non-apis pollinators is important here as well. Um, also, from a train-the-trainer perspective, it's really important for our journey level members to know the basics of conducting effective outreach and mentoring. And of course, that means understanding various laws and regulations regarding beekeeping in California, as well as across the nation. So understanding Africanized honeybee biology and locally defensive behavior is also really important in the program. And just really understanding the nuances of working with and actually requeening locally defensive honeybees can be really challenging, but needs to be mastered as well. And again, uh, it's, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> as beekeepers, uh, we do enjoy the honey. So being able to extract honey from a hive, understand how to handle it properly, label it, uh, understand honey properties and the varietals, as well as uh, how to use and manipulate uh, wax and other hive products is also important. And again, um, these courses are available online or in person or hybrid. At the master level, like I, like I mentioned in the previous slide, everything our beekeepers at this level need to know has been learned at the journey level. So this is our members opportunity to excel at creating a project that is really in alignment with what they're most passionate about. Therefore, we eliminate the need for an exam. We provide opportunities for our, our master level candidates to pursue an area of interest even if it's outside of the suggested tracks listed here. So here's an example. Here's an example of some of the master capstone projects currently in process. And we're happy to announce that our first master graduate from our 2016 cohort taught our planning ahead for your first hives and our working your colonies classes and also created and taught a four hour online course for intermediate backyard beekeepers which covered in more detail some of the skill and knowledge in the camp study guides. So just to give you an idea as to why we decided um, on our master level having these master tracks See, folks are more apt to stay connected to the group when they are valued and can uniquely express their passion and creativity, right? And as you can see from the topics above, the treasury of wisdom here, insight and, and resources that's currently in development at this master level far surpasses the expectation that the uh, the camp staff could have even conceptualized, really. So that's why the, the tracks are flexible. 
we we learn and we aspire to support our master candidates in pursuing what they love about bees and beekeeping. Candidates apply for the master level of the camp after they've successfully met all of the requirements of the journey level. They attend an interview with camp staff to discuss the topic that they're interested in. And then uh, we offer guidance on how to proceed. And we've also developed a couple of different templates for uh, candidates to uh, write their proposals. And these proposals are usually reviewed in February and acceptances issued by March 1st. And most of the project presentations take place in October. So camp staff provides evaluation and feedback on the proposal and confirms a project start date. And of course, candidates always have opportunities between March and October to seek out any support by email or phone. And we can meet over Zoom with camp staff and other master level campers. And those uh, master level capstone presentations um, are, like I said, usually scheduled for October, unless otherwise arranged because project timelines are dependent upon the scope of the work and are addressed usually on an individual basis. So the master level of the camp is an opportunity for members who are keen to add value to the agriculture environment in the state and the country for that matter, at a level beyond their annual requisite volunteer commitment. And we will get to that volunteer commitment in a moment. I just wanted to touch on the exams at the apprentice and journey level right now. Uh, since 2016, the average pass for written exams has been 86% for apprentices and uh, a wonderful 91% for our journey level members. We've had a total of 242 members certified at the apprentice level, 36 at the journey level and one at the master level. And we do offer retakes prior to the practical exams in case some folks uh, get exam online exam jitters because our passing grades are 80% across the board. And since 2016, we've granted 16 retakes for the written exam and two retakes for the practical. These exams are based on information included in the study guides, our online webinars, and some in-person classes, and of course, our, our study halls. And despite the rigor of the program, the exam scores over the years have been encouraging, I think, mostly due to this individualized attention that uh, we can give to our members through smaller study groups and online study halls. And those online st study halls, the staff convene and welcome new members. Um, we field questions about the program and the exams. Dr. Nino, as well as our supervisor in Southern California and myself, the program manager, attend and facilitate most of the classes and study halls where members are encouraged to reach out with questions and concerns. Uh, I, oh, and since 2018, uh, a camp membership committee comprised of member representatives from across the state, Southern, Central, and Northern California, has been helping members by bringing questions, concerns, and suggestions on the program um, to help improve their experience. So we've, we've got a pretty great relationship with our membership, which goes a long way. Now let's talk about those volunteer hours. Uh, we call them Bees and C's. Bees is an acronym for beneficial educational experiences and C's is short for continuing education hours. So as previously mentioned, 
our campers are required to perform volunteer hours every year and it's the responsibility of the member to record their B's and C's to maintain their certification status. And one hour is equivalent to one B or one C. Our B year runs from October 1 through September 30. And it is so important that our members upload this data because it is crucial, crucial uh, to metrics for continued program funding. So at the apprentice assistant and apprentice level, members are required to volunteer 10 hours of their time, 20 hours at the journey level, and 25 at the master level. And when a person decides to volunteer with the camp, they join our common cause and they share our mission and vision. And they're essentially official camp spokespersons and represent the program and work together with staff and other members to accomplish the mission, just using science-based information to educate stewards and ambassadors for honeybees and beekeeping. And our camp membership, they're grounded in UC's principles of community uh, and strengthened by common goals, shared interests, camaraderie, and uh, passion for environmental stewardship and public safety in all communities. And these principles of community are sustained by an ongoing commitment of all of our members to honor and respect those shared values and principles the camp has a corrective action policy in place as well for any behavior incongruent with these principles. In 2020, we are working online and over Zoom with campers who want to contribute to the program's growth and development. And we're getting some help with projects like expanding and enhancing the curriculum digitizing study guides with embedded video, developing requeening protocols for the state in areas with and without locally defensive stock, updating our policy and procedures and safety manuals, authoring the assistant apprentice curriculum, assisting with formatting a lot of documents and so many more things. It's just such a gift to work with our members. So in summary, it's, it's about respect, integrity, and inclusion, really working together. We're all wired to belong and membership in the camp really does help support that need. These B's and C's are a huge part of the train the trainer model that our program is based on. It's, it's the end goal, really, it's the outreach. Our members are active. They're helping others broaden their understanding of honeybees and beekeeping. They're inspiring honeybee ambassadorship and environmental stewardship. They really do have a sense of purposefulness and connection to nature and bees and provide service to their communities. And in serving others, they end up reaping the benefits of that feel-good volunteer hormone, you know, the oxytocin. So um, we've offered a list of some pre-approved beneficial educational experiences like presenting a bee-related lecture or workshop, holding office in a bee club, assisting members of a youth organization, mentoring new beekeepers, giving a public beekeeping demonstration at a fair or a festival, um, swarm removal for folks who can't afford it, writing a science-based journal um, uh, for anything to do with uh, honeybees or beekeeping, uh, social media support, online mentoring of new beekeepers is another really important one, and ride-alongs with county apiarists in certain counties where that's available. That's a fun one too. 
Now, continuing education hours, you know, attend those science-based lectures, listen to podcasts, go to the trade shows and conventions, and read, 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 right? Um, time used to educate oneself um, enriches understanding about bees and anything related to beekeeping. And that adds value and credibility to the certifications that everyone has worked so hard to achieve and maintain. So why are those bees records so important? Well, as I mentioned, uh, we need to show the metrics, right? Volunteerism is camp's fuel. Members can choose how to earn their bees and C's in alignment with their passion. So they can serve from a place of joy and integrity which in turn affects the overall vibe of our program. And the service ends up flowing like the best honey harvest. It really helps to build and maintain momentum and collaboration and a sense of belonging. We, we find purpose in contribution and helping others and the environment. And by remembering why we're contributing for our kids, for our grandkids, you know, to, for food security, the earth, and pollinators in general, it reminds us of the, the what's in it for me principle. And it gets us to our why and helps Move us beyond that feeling of obligation or have to. So our time in, with our bees becomes joyful and fun. And I got to say, all of this would not have been possible without our advisory board, those wise guides offering their generosity of time and service and insight. Amina Harris, Shannon Mueller, Dewey Karen, Mia McNeil. Our program is successful because of the input of their wisdom and discernment. We meet every six months and the program manager reports on current state of the program. And in late spring, we review registration numbers and the course calendar. And at the year end, we review our B's and C's metrics, as well as our pass rate and discuss program improvements. And actually a representative from our camp membership committee is also in attendance to offer insight from the membership, um, which is awesome. Basically our advisory board is our best accountability buddy. We explore improving communication, policies, and membership participation and satisfaction. In fact, one of the many gems resulting from these discussions was to actually establish that online live study hall that I've been referring to. So just as the volunteers are our programs fuel, our supporters that you see on the slide here are the financial fuel in the camp tank that enables our program to continue. In 2019, we were granted funding to run our first Southern California cohort in San Diego, and that was generously supported by the County of San Diego. And as a result, we were able to double our apprentice member numbers in 2019. And we're currently working on other ways of expanding our program and establishing some camp satellite hubs. Always good to have a plan. Always good to have goals and a vision.
And we feel confident that we can meet the goals and the vision that we've got before you here. With increased social media marketing and word of mouth, we can increase the membership of the camp, especially now that there's an apprentice assistant level. We have already established three new camp satellite hubs this year where members can take their practical exams and attend in-person classes. Uh, one is in Orange County at the South Coast Research and Extension Center. We call them our Camp OCB team. Another is at the Valley Hive in Chatsworth. And our newest location is at UCLA. See, the goal as well is to have hubs at UCs and CSUs universities across the state of California that are interested in meeting the requirements of becoming a camp satellite hub. And templates for this opportunity are in process. It actually begins with the school becoming a B campus and starting a beekeeping club and then offering the camp apprentice assistant apprentice and eventually journey and master level programming. So we're doing it by duplication. <laughs> and we're also enhancing our relationships with the state and county apiary inspectors too by working more closely with the California Department of Food and Ag. You know, there's 58 counties in California and even more rules and regulations for beekeeping as every city within each county usually has distinct regulations on bees and beekeepers uh, and beekeeping. So our campers are uniquely positioned to provide support and assistance to their local county and promote the development and extension of honeybee and beekeeping skills and knowledge through the science-based research and education, discussion and reflection that the camp is able to offer. And San Diego, as previously mentioned, has instituted a ride-along program where the county apiary inspector and the camp member join forces in outreach and education. It's a lot of fun. As early as 2021, some of our journey members will be recording their beneficial educational experiences, their bees, by hosting online study halls and classes for our apprentice assistance level. And our pollinator education program is the Camps Kids program. Uh, and we fondly call it PEP. So the PEP program was established by Dr. Nino in 2016, and it's been a favorite of teachers and kids. Um, the camp uh, PEP offers a four station presentation, and it's done in the haagen Honeybee Garden in Davis, where students have the opportunity to actively participate in learning about pollination, pollinator anatomy, pollinator habitats, and managed pollinators through games and crafts and even a bee catching and releasing exercise. In 2018 and 2019, we served over 300 kids from four school districts and we're currently working with one of our journey level members to lead that program in 2021. There you go, it's more beautiful train the trainer stuff there. This year, we established um, a member portal on our camp website exclusively for certified members to house our study guides, course calendars, newsletters, and a member locator map. Um, we did this to enhance organization of our materials and to improve communication. And we did it at the request of our membership committee. We also established uh, an Ask a Beekeeper resources map where camp members can choose to offer their assistance to other beekeepers publicly and or share their information privately 
with members in a members only section. And this is another option for education and outreach, which will also help support member connection. The foundation of the camp is membership. It's important to remember that our volunteers can help fulfill a need for our organization, but our volunteers are not a need. They provide a way to meet a need. And the needs of the camp, like training the trainer or education, outreach, are met as a result of our volunteers' needs for contribution and meaning, connection, belonging, and sharing a passion for honeybees. One of the biggest challenges of any program manager is reaching out and asking volunteers for assistance. Camp staff has a responsibility to give our membership opportunities to step up and help. Each of these opportunities show up in different ways too. For example, uh, if a member's dissatisfied, say with a social media post, perhaps it's an opportunity to discuss boundaries and protocol on social media. And perhaps this member feels passionately about forming a small group and developing policy for review. We never know unless we ask. As program managers, we also need to remember to have fun with our members, to ensure that the work in some ways can feel like play. Not every minute of every meeting has to be serious. You know, we can establish at least five minutes at the top of each meeting to get to laugh with each other, and then maybe even have turns running the meetings, right? Collaboration has a, a really great recharge effect. And when people are passionate about something and experience the positive effects of collaboration, they tend to share that joy with others. So like I said, our membership is indeed the solid foundation upon which our California Master Beekeeper program is built and continues to grow and expand. We owe the success of the camp to our membership. Please visit us at our website at cam bp.ucdavis.edu or email us at camasterb at gmail.com if you'd like any more information on our program. We'd be happy to help you and we thank you so much for listening. Be well.